Hi, this is the final section where we add material to a previously modeled shoe. So if adding color and texture sounds exciting, let's get into it. First, let's tidy up our scene collection by grouping the objects into two separate collections. One for the shoe model and the other for the references. To do that, let's box select this and then hit M on the keyboard and name that to shoe model and then OK. Now that sits in its own collection, let's do the same with the shoe references. Hit M and name that to references and OK. Now we have two collections right here. Now, since this is all about materials, let's hide the shoe model by clicking this icon on the shoe model and zoom in the reference image just to analyze the materials on it. And as you can see, in terms of color, we have two main colors that stand out, which is green and white. And in terms of texture, we have quite a few textures here. This texture, this one, and I'm not sure if you can see it clearly. If I zoom, you can see there's a texture on the sole. So there are quite a few textures that we will need to create if we want to make our own shoe look anything close to this. The goal is to represent our model as realistic as we can. And speaking of realism, there's a few things we could have done to sell a better realistic effect. Um, like adding stitches to our model and these other minor details on the sole. But for the purpose of keeping this nice and simple, our model, which is this one, looks more than okay. Now into the main stuff, adding color. Now, the shoe has a default color. In fact, it has a default material that we can only view that material by going into the material preview. So there's a material preview tab that we can click here to see that there is actually a material on our model by default, which is all white. Now let's change the first, let's create the first material. So click on any one of these, the Foxing, for example, go to the material properties tab down here and click new. And then it brings up a new material. We can rename that by double clicking on this to green. Now we have a green material. The material will have a color and a texture. So let's give first the color to something green like that and bring it dark down to a color that's close to the reference image like that. And now we see that it's easy to add color to a model. Now, if we want all the other parts of the shoe to have the same color, we will just select those parts. And then lastly, select the part that already has the color and then control L link materials. And now we can see that all the other parts have the green material to them. And that's how you can add color to any object that you create in Blender. Uh, if we zoom out, we can see from a distance that our shoe is not so different from our reference image. But when we zoom in closer, we can see that up close, our model lacks texture. To add these textures to the shoe, it's really easy. We would need to be in the shading tab, which is up here. At the moment, we're in the layout. Let's click the shading tab. This is the window that it presents to us. So here we can click on this object and now we have these notes down here that we can control. As we can see, it tells us that this object has the green material assigned to it. And so are these other parts. Now, I understand that if you're new, this can be confusing and overwhelming, but I will try to keep it as simple as I can so that you don't feel overwhelmed. This principal BSD sh uh, shader it's essentially what you have here when we changed, when we added the color. But the difference in this shading tab is we have different properties, which in which include the base color, all this metallic specular roughness, all this sheen. And if we go down here, we can see the alpha, the normal. For now, 
we are not going to concern ourselves with all of those. There are only three of these that we would change to create the material or the texture on this object. The three main ones would be the color, which we have already started playing with. The next one would be the roughness and the last would be the normal. And for us to be able to change that, let me bring this up like that. And I think now let's click on the principal BSD shader and then hit control T so that it adds these other notes. If control T does nothing for you, it's likely that the note wrangler add-on is ticked off. And to tick that on, let's go to edit preferences add-ons and then search note wrangler as you can see this is ticked so make sure you tick that so that adds three notes when you do Control t which is the texture coordinate the mapping and the image all of this have turned black because now it's expecting the color object from an image but we do not have an image texture we are only going to use the textures that Blender provide to us. So let's switch this to a noise texture. Shift S is to change that image texture to a different texture called the noise texture. Right away, we can see that there's some texture on the object. But if you are experienced with this, you would know that it's odd. And that's because it's expecting a UV mapped into a vector like this and then out but we do not have a uv because this has not been uv unwrapped so let's take the object data into the vector and now we see that it's more even this is what we want because that is how we're going to create that texture on the shoe now what all of this is doing is it's changing the base color and that's not what we want we want all this data to affect the normal instead of the color and then we'll use a different node to control the color. So let's take this out of the base color and then pop that into the normals. And the reason for that is we want to control the bombs on the object, the ones we see here on the surface of the shoe. Now to, to make it bumpy, like on the reference image, let's go shift A and add in a, a vector called a bomb vector. Let's put that in between the texture and the normal. And instead of the color affecting the normal, let's put the color to affect the height. Give it some time. And now you have uh, something that looks like this. This is not interesting. And that's because the strength of the bombs is one, which is the max. So let's reduce the strength to 0 0.1. And I think that's good. And then again, the scale of the noise texture is only five let's increase that to 50 and now you have it looking like that what a difference that makes right um now we have this being controlled correctly but it looks rough as a natural object there should be some shine to it right now it looks a bit dull so let's add in another node which will be the map range so shift a converter select map range and then bring that here this is what we'll use to control the roughness and now you can see everything is at one so let's play with the values here let's keep the maximum really down at 0.2 and then the minimum value here should be 0.5 and now let's take the color value from here from the noise texture and pop it into the value of the map range. So it has a bit of the noise texture affecting the roughness as well. Again, this is all out of experiment. Do this however you want. Now you can see there's some shine on that object, which I think it's more realistic. Now the base color is only one. So we want to mix two colors to create the color on the object. So let's go shift A and add in another converter, which would be the color RAM, which as you can see, there's a slider here where you can mix as many colors as you want on the object. But for this color, if you, if you click on this, you can change the color to a green color or just use the hex value 182415 and enter something green like that. And then let that come up to about this. Let the color affect the base and then now you can see it's coming together now we have two different colors mixed by 0 0.5 so it's half of each 
so now it looks more um, appealing now let's change this other one from white to 202c1e that's the hex value now let's just play with the positions of this to see if it looks better that to me looks okay not so bright and not so dull either we can copy this same property and just play with it with the other objects which is what we are going to do for example if we select the lining it has the green material to it but we can create a new material from this material by clicking this now we have a copy of the existing material that we can rename to green pattern because the lining has a pattern type of material. And now let's change this shift S and add a magic texture. So let's perform some magic on that one. And now we can see that the texture looks different. If I zoom in closer, you can see that it's different from the other one. And that's what we want. However, we need to pull up the strength for this one to one and the distance to one and then the scale of these needs to be 100 and there we have it and then on this one we can do the same thing if we can see on the reference image the nike has a smoother version of this material so let's click that button and rename that to green smooth because it's a smooth version of the green and enter and for that one, we would leave everything as is, except we would uh, turn down the strength of the bomb a bit more like that. So it's smoother than the rest, even though it has the material. And then we can increase the scale to 100 as well. So that's a good texture. And yeah, this is how you play with textures to get exactly what you want. Let's give it the green pattern material because that looks to be the better option. We have created the main materials for the shoe. And then let's hit the sole and tap. Now you can add a loop cut here if you haven't already. And then hit three or click to select the whole bottom and then assign it the green smooth material and hit tab so it has that smooth material for the bottom section of the shoe like that. So that looks good. And I think we, we have done it and for this one we would keep the same material we would change this sole to the green material but create a different version of it and rename that to white v which stands for voronoi because we would be replacing this noise texture so shift s and go to texture and replace with voronoi now that's what i mean so it's a texture that just looks good for the sole however because the color is white let's play with it from here let's just change these colors to white color and this one bring that here and there we have it that looks okay i think the roughness on this one could go up a bit now for the very nice texture even though that looks fine we could increase the scale to 200 so it's more or less like this i'm not sure if you can see it but that is the texture on the shoe and i think that looks perfect to me now for this one in particular we would select it and then also copy material which would be white v and instead of it being the voronoi let's create a version of it and say white smooth because that section of the material is smooth and now let's shift s this and change that to a noise texture and zoom in closer make it shiny like that and then i think the strength of the bomb could go down a bit hold down shift like that just play with these and get the result so this is what we have been able to create. Looking at this, I think we need to change the colors here uh, to something slightly blue-ish, like our reference image. So let's go back into the shading tab and adjust the colors, make it slightly blue like so. And that just changed everything. Um, let's see how that looks. That's a bit too much, but you get the idea. So let's... Do the same with the sole, change that to something white-ish. So I think that's fine. That to me looks okay right now. And now we see that our shoe has some texture and color that we can render out. Now there's a little trick that I like to do to add the realism on the shoe. Select this heel loop 
and then add a new material to it tap to go into edit mode and then control r to add a loop cut bring it closer like that and then in face select mode zoom in closer or click this to select that edge and then select this white and then assign so it has a white color instead and now add another loop cut bring it to the end like so and that just makes it look different uh, from the rest and then helps to sell the realistic effect in general so this is it for the material creation process just experiment with that um, ask any questions if you have them um, now the next thing we can do if we hide the reference image is to add in a plane so shift a add a plane for the floor s to scale it up to about that and then hit tap on the keyboard select that edge now e z to extrude and then tap back into object mode go to modifiers add the modifier to the object bevel increase the amount of bevel to about that and then the segments so that it's nice and smooth like that let's view the shoe from this angle and then add the camera shift a add the camera and if we want the camera to see what we are seeing let's hit ctrl alt and zero so it sees the shoe from the angle in which we are looking at it and then g is to move it about like that now let's add a, a material to the background add new material change the base color to something that is appealing something that complements like that and then zero to go into camera view numpad zero and now if we want to go into the render view we do not see anything because the wall environment is all dark we can make it lighter if we need to see but it needs to be dark if we want to light the scene properly and then shift a to add light area light gz to bring it up so we can see the shoe and then s to scale it up and click this bob icon to increase the intensity or the power 